DEA agents searching people. So the agents are in plain clothes, right? And they all of a sudden just pop up on you as you're getting on your, on your plane. Well, an investigative journalist decided to do the same thing and investigate the investigators by dressing in plain clothes and putting the investigators under investigation. It's a hell of a story. Atlanta's News First did a remarkable job on this. Um, let me give you a reminder of the kind of thing that we're talking about. Here it is. Atlanta News first. All right, let's put up the picture full mass um, of their reporting out of Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. Um, you see the gentleman here. So the video was from an incident we previously covered where director Tabari Stardabot, who was traveling to LA from Atlanta, the Hartsfield Jackson International Airport, he had his bags completely searched by DEA agents who provided no explanation as to why, okay? We also covered this. When you have those two individuals, well known, okay? Eric Andre, fellow comedian, Clayton English. They filed a lawsuit actually after that with claims they were racially profiled by police where? At Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. That's out of Atlanta. This was on separate occasions, 2021 to 2020. The lawsuit quotes records from Clayton County Police showing 56% of jet bridge stops involved black passengers and 68% were people of color. Atlanta News First investigates recently obtained the same data and is analyzing the cases further. So Clayton County narcotics officers are um, also searching in this screenshot Emmy winning Hollywood actor, okay, um, Ellie on the bridge of an Atlanta to Los Angeles flight in 2020. And this part is important. He says, okay, I'm a random search, guys. So he says, panning to the line for the aircraft boarding door and adding, see all those white folks? and I'm the random search. So keep the picture up. They're getting on the plane, which means they have already gone through security. They've gone through TSA, a federal agency. They've gone through a machine that literally sees through your body and your belongings. Boarding the plane, all of a sudden, hey, I'm the random search person. Initially, the Emmy-winning Hollywood actor assumed this was somebody from the airline, as many of us would assume. But he's the police, okay? So both Clayton County police records and federal court documents show drug agents working at Hartsfield, Jackson, Atlanta, and National Airport rarely find drugs on passengers at departing gates. They rarely do. They do find money. They don't find drugs. More often, they find money. Records show agents have seized millions of dollars from passengers at boarding gates. The money is administratively forfeited as the proceeds of drug trafficking, even when no drugs are found. Agents generally do not arrest the passenger. They arrest their money. So you will say, how in the hell is this even illegal? Is this legal? This should be completely illegal, right? Well, it should be. It's legal based on statute. It's legal based on in lieu of evidence. So they take the money. They say, right, we're going to take this money uh, in lieu of a future investigation. We'll be in touch. And they're never in touch. So now you have to go through the bureaucracy to get your money back. You have to come back to Atlanta, typically. You have to go through a song and dance routine in order to get your money back. It is gruesome when you know the process. So a lot of people will say, the hell with that. You can keep that $1,000. You can keep that $500. It's not worth me buying a plane ticket or hiring an attorney to get the money back. And so now you have voluntarily allowed it to forfeit back to the government. They keep it, and they actually just did 
a legal but illegal fundraiser. See how it works? Okay, there's more. Atlanta News First Investigates found dozens of cases filed in federal court styled USA versus some amount of currency. Passengers must file a claim within 45 days of receiving official notice. The government has seized their money or is automatically forfeited back to the government who seized the money in the first place. Most cases never go before a judge. This is all done by way of what's called administrative policy, okay? Technically, the burden of proof is on the government to show by a preponderance of the evidence, more likely than not, that the money is from drug trafficking. In practice, based on court records, passengers are forced to prove their money innocent on the spot at the airport gate or is seized as drug proceeds. After drug agents find money, passengers are forced to pull up bank statements on their phones or otherwise provide proof money is not from drug trafficking. That is not how this is supposed to work. So let's say this happens to you, and you tell the federal agent, um, I'm not answering questions. I have the right to remain silent. Check the bag all you want. I'm getting on my plane. Oh, must be drug money. We're going to seize it. There's more. Merely flying from Atlanta to Los Angeles is suspicious, according to multiple probable cause statements, because, quote, it's a known drug trafficking route. Really? Atlanta to L.A. is also a popular route for film and the television industry. Several of the innocent passengers who talk with Atlanta News First investigates are in the entertainment business. There's a strong incentive for drug agents to search bags for money at the airport, even when drugs are not found. Their agencies get to keep the money through a memorandum of understanding with local police departments, such as Brookhaven's. The DEA gives police a cut of the proceeds from the money the task force officers seized. Oh, there's more. Brookhaven police have received more than $100,000 from the DEA since its department assigned a Brookhaven K-9 handler and his dog to the drug task force a little more than a year ago. The police department is 14 miles from the airport and in an entirely different county called DeKalb County. How does that work? Who the hell knows? There's more. Let's put him up. Sergeant David Fikes, who is featured on the Brookhaven Police Department's Facebook page, even though he is conducting plainclothes drug interdiction operations at the airport and elsewhere. So the sergeant has been involved in the seizure of 1163000 dollars plus. That's according to records Atlanta News First Investigates obtained through an open records request. His department's cut is about 9% of that money. But Brookhaven is responsible for his salary, police car, canine, and other expenses. Are you getting the picture here? Innocent people who were searched at the airport said they were unsure of their rights to decline a search by police at the gate. Airline passengers must submit to a security screening by TSA or else be denied entry into the airport secure area under federal regulations. Passengers can be denied boarding for declining a security screening, but passengers don't surrender their Fourth Amendment rights against warrantless searches by police just because they're at the airport. According to multiple analysts and court documents, the DEA officially calls it stop and searches at airport gates, cold consent encounters. Passengers are free to end the discussion and walk away, according to the DEA, even if they are unaware of those rights. But let me tell you how they do it. They would say something like, hey, listen, either sign this consent or I'm going to find a reason to get a warrant to search your bags. And that means you are going to miss this flight. And so you say, go ahead and search. Well, you sign the consent, Dan. You sign the consent, and they take your money, and they say, board your flight. 45 days, you can get your money back. Just go through this process that we know good and damn well you won't. Wow. Great reporting by the investigative journalist at Atlanta News First. Uh, ben, thought